Welcome viewers, this is Oklahoma Bridges. This is part 8 of the Takeda Clock uh, repair project. And I'm going to begin reassembling the movement. And so I have the bottom plate of the movement here with with the four of the five pillar posts. And I have the um, lifting lever here. This clock is sort of unusual from the original uh, Ansonia clock that it's patterned after in that it has a little coil return spring there instead of it just being gravity operated, but that's no big deal. Um, the first thing we need to do is start loading parts into the um, movement for reassembly, and there are a few notes to take while doing this. For one thing, several of the parts have springs on them, such as this strike hammer lever has a spring on it, and these do tend to get uh, a little bit in the way of things when um, when reassembling, and you've got to kind of look over this very carefully to decide if you can hook the spring on um, before construction starts or if you have to uh, or if you can wait till after the movements reassembled to hook the spring back on so it's well worth taking a look at this part and seeing how everything goes now you can see this slot here is where the resting position would be and this spring would obviously be set up to cause it to return to the resting position. So if we flip this over, it's obvious to see that this is the um, position in which this mounts in the movement, and you've got to look and see, does this spring, where does it wrap at? And I believe this spring gets wound up and hooks does not hook there like that. That does not provide enough return tension. Okay. But it's worth investigating to see where it hooks. Particularly if you did not take note of that during the disassembly phase, which I rarely do. And to see where it hooks. I'm thinking you wind this up enough that it hooks back on the bottom side of the movement plate. That is uh, fairly typical for these to do that. Of course, it's going to make it a little bit on the fun side to get it hooked back into place. Once we figure the trick out to do it, it's just a matter of tensioning the spring. Like so. See how it's hooked around the plate there? And that gives the needed tension for the hammer blow. Now, this is going to be a point of contention during the reassembly process because this is going to be putting some loading on some of the parts and is going to be getting in the way and so it will cause some problems. So that's that part. The other item to address would be the great wheels and uh, putting the springs back on the great wheels. Now, if you didn't know already from looking at the staking here, this is the strike side and this is the time side, you would look at the shoulders here and you see that the time great wheel has a longer um, 
section and then there's the shoulder where it bears in the front plate. This one has a shorter section because of the taller bushing in the front plate from where the count wheel goes. So this is the strike side great wheel and this is the time side great wheel. And the first thing to do with these is to connect the springs. Now you remember these springs from the previous video and I have adjusted the position of the retaining clamp so that there is a definite left and right spring now and the springs are going to go just like that the springs are both identical so it really does not matter which one goes where and with the help of a winding key make sure that the center coil is caught on the spring and I can tell that it is it's winding up so this assembly is ready to load into the movement plate and as you can see this has popped out already so we'll do this last you're going to do the same thing with this one assemble it with the help of a winding key make sure that it's gonna going to um, be hooked and then assemble it into the movement now take and find the uh, pivot in the back plate of the movement and insert the great wheel assemblies into that it helps if you cheat and actually look just like that okay so basically from here it's a matter of loading the parts uh, in a neat orderly fashion uh, I like to do usually one side at a time so let's select the um, the wheels for the time side there's the escape wheel the second arbor that doesn't have a warning pin on it so I believe that's for the time side there's another wheel for the time side time 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 and it's a bit like doing a puzzle you just figure out what order you can put parts in and I've sort of had the movement apart in a variety of different uh, sub assemblies already so doing the various testing that you've seen me doing in the previous videos so you get kind of an idea of of where every get to know the movement and get an idea of where everything is going to go. Of course, these have all got lantern pinions, so you've got to make sure when you're putting the wheels in that you get when you're engaging the wheels that you get past the shroud on the pinion to get different wheels engaged. And trying to keep you all in frame here so you can follow along. Just follow the gear train right up towards the escape wheel.
Okay, so there's the time train assembled. The strike train, a little bit more interesting. Uh, because there's a lever that goes in here, and the lever also has a spring that has to be wrapped around the pillar, which causes the lever to want to be jumpy, just like the um, just like the hammer arbor was. See, it's going to want to pop out, and so that we have something to contend with during this process. But it's going to go about there, so let's move that out of the way, and let's give it something to run into to help it stay in position. Because it's going to be bearing against the third wheel here most of the time. Okay. Go ahead and also at this point position it in one of the locking slots of the third wheel like that fourth wheel usually leave the fly out till last and something I did not discuss the fly very much but I want to make sure that the um, that the fly is not just absolutely loose on the arbor but you don't want to make sure it's uh, tight either it needs to be able to have a little bit of a slip fit that's that's much better than it was because the fly needs to have a little bit of slip so that the, the gear train can accelerate the speed. And then when the gear train stops, the fly needs to be able to slip a little bit. It's very important. We're going to leave this out till near the end. We'll leave the verge out until near the end. So now we can refit the... Um, this arbor here it's going to go in there like that you see it's on top of the third wheel disc This is a point where a little pair of pliers or something would be handy. I'm actually trying to um, wind up the spring here. Oops. It's a very stout little spring. It keeps wanting to um, slip on me here. Talk amongst yourselves. Almost had it. There we go. Okay. Now, let's see if we can let that rest over there like that. So, on most clocks, the count wheel is either dished or it's not dished. And in the case of this clock, it's dished. See the count wheel is dished slightly. 
Some clocks too, there will be a washer that will go here on this particular movement. The washer is a shoulder that's built into the uh, bushing. There will usually be a wear mark on one side of the count wheel and not the other. Um, but there should be some obvious sign to help you orientate the count wheel the correct way. And if in doubt, look at which direction the great wheel goes. That's the direction the count wheel goes. It should be counting up as it rotates in the direction of operation. Flip it over and place it on the movement plate. Then you reinstall the washer here that uh, secures it into place. Make sure that the count wheel stays down in the correct position. Okay, usually this is the easiest way to do it is to insert it like this and then rotate it round and lift it up and get the notch in the locking hole now the count wheel is held in position just like that this one's very nice and free turning now we can start the fun process of merging the plates back together. And we're going to lower this down. And you see what happened. Like I said, this will be a um, a little bit of a point of contention at different times during this process. So the only thing I can say to do is to start over again and be prepared to act on it. Some people like doing using tools. I'm I'm more used to doing this with my fingers, just bare like this. Okay. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to actually hold this with one hand in the position where it needs to stay. And with the other hand lower the front plate down. Got it. Because that usually would work a little bit better. Once you can get a couple nuts started, do it, because that will help you to maintain progress as you go along. Don't worry about whether they're the right side up or not. Just get a couple started, because what we're wanting to do is get things down here at the bottom started first, so I don't have to sit here and hold this. By gently squeezing the plates together, 
you can figure out where it's binding at, what needs to be having attention when. And right now what's actually going on is this center pillar here that's attached to the front plate going down needs to be adjusted a little bit to get to go through the hole in the back plate. And that's going to require using a little bit of manipulative force from something, a screwdriver, um, just anything. To get it to go down in through the hole. Okay, so we've reached a point where that's come down a little bit to where this is just about wanting to enter its its hole. In fact, I got it right there where it's just on its two, just a little bit. It's a little, it's a little bit on the front, a little bit on the back. So let's do the time side first because that's normally easier. Okay. Okay. Just maintaining enough pressure to keep things going together, and then I just sort of feel for what's loose and what's tight. Okay. That's the the trick to doing this. see that the center arbor has jumped out so put that back into place and continue maintaining pressure all right you see that all these are loose this one's in so we're gonna go over to the strike side that one's in this one's tight so it needs to go into its hole okay that one went in Okay. Figure out which way I need to go to get this one in the hole. Somewhere right in there, about. Don't ever use too much force when doing this because you do not want to bend a pivot during this stage of assembly.
There we go. That made a lot of progress just getting that in right there. Okay. Okay, that's everything but the verge and the fly back in the movement. So now what we need to do is to time the strike side before we put those two items back in. So let's take a look and see. It looks like it's pretty close. So maybe the only thing that's going to have to be done is to check a warning run. Let's... Um, You've seen me do this in another video. Let's very carefully put a few clicks on there. Just uh, We're not putting any tension on there at all. What we're doing is counteracting the fact that I'm going to be operating this in the direction that the spring unwinds. And I do not want the spring to come off the um, on the hook. Okay? So I need to do this somewhat slowly here. Okay. So you see that the um, the count lever is rubbing on the edge of the uh, wheel just a little bit. On this particular movement, I can bend that out just slightly without affecting anything else. So that the count lever lands square in the teeth. Okay. I'll let it slip through quickly so we can get to a deep slot. Make sure it goes square into a deep slot. Okay, it went nice and square into a deep slot, so it should be locked, but I'm seeing that it's not locking the way I'd like it to. And you see on this movement that the pin on the warning wheel also performs the locking function. Okay, watch the count lever raise back up on the cam of the third wheel. See that? Try to go backwards just a little bit. Okay. All right. See it dropped. That's ideally where I, that that pin on the fourth wheel, the warning wheel, should make contact with the locking lever, but it doesn't. The wheel rotates this far before it makes contact, which causes the count lever to rise back up because it's rising back up on the cam there on the third wheel so what we need to do what I need to do now is back this up a little bit to about the position where I'd like it to be and then spread the plates apart just enough to pull this wheel out of mesh that I can rotate it and get the pin in the correct position Okay, and I see which way it needs to go. So I'm going to loosen that pillar nut. Leave that pillar nut 
just touching there. Loosen this pillar nut off enough. I can pick up on this. Move this bottom pivot out. Okay. Rotate the wheel without rotating any of the other wheels. And then remesh the two gears. Okay. Now we've got a half an hour run that we can do to check it. Alright, it struck, it's counting, and then it just locked. Okay. So let's check it again. Okay, not so fast here. Okay, counting there. Alright, there's just a little bit of rotation there on that fourth wheel from the point that that drops to that. So it ensures, I think, that it's going to work just fine. So now we can add the fly fan we can test it at normal operating speed. Oh, got to loosen off the nut first to do this. Okay. All right. Make sure that we've not going to come unhooked here. Now, I'm going to use the time train this time to check the warning function. Okay. All right, show it warned. All right, that's good. Let's try check it again on another uh There it warned. Okay. Do the same thing over here. All right, something I noticed on this that I don't really like is the warning run isn't very long. And I might not be able to do anything about that. The warning run is probably fixed um, because of the design of the clock because it uses the same pin for both warning and locking. So let's um, let's do another test here. Did you see that? How very little bit of warning run there was. It just it just turned a fraction of a turn. But that's really that's enough because the uh, locking the locking lever is. Um, up out of the slot in the cam for it to operate. Okay. Well, I think at this point we can go ahead and put the um, the virgin. Okay, get it in the correct position here. We'll have to loosen a uh, pillar nut off just enough to spread the. Uh... Okay. Go ahead and 
flip the movement over and make sure this is on the right way. Install the pillar nut here. not going to install the minute hand but I am going to use the um, minute hand nut as a handle works very conveniently <laughs> 